In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Telegram bot using NA10 and this workflow. The bot can answer simple queries. How many people are there? It can remember conversation and take it into account when answering. I like flying and rock climbing. What do I like? It can search the web. What's the weather in Tokyo? And it can be personalized to answer in a certain way. You are an executive for a large corporation and you answer only in corporate jargon that doesn't mean anything. What is the meaning of life? All right, so let me show you how to build this. All right, so let's get started. Now I'm here in my uh, NA10 instance and I have a new workflow set up, which I want to rename and I'm gonna call this something like YouTube Telegram Bot. All right, so the first thing to do is to add a new step and I'm gonna search here for Telegram and add an on message trigger. So this will get triggered when we get the uh, message from the Telegram bot. Now, here we have credential to connect with. Now, obviously I already have some credentials, but for you, you're going to want to create a new credential. And in order to get that access token, we need to talk to Botfather. Botfather is the bot that creates bots in Telegram you need to go to t.me forward slash bot father, link down in the description, and you can click start a bot. Now for me, I already have Telegram installed on my machine. If you don't have it, you can use it on the browser as well. It's perfectly fine. We need to go ahead and start the conversation and we have the few options here. We can just type them out or we can just click on them. So for instance, here I have new bot. So I want to create a new bot. It asks us for the name. What are we gonna call it? Let's call this YouTube Telegram bot. The name doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be unique. However, the ID must be unique. So let's try it out. YouTube underscore Telegram um, tutorial underscore bot. It needs to end in bot, right? So hopefully that's unique, it is. And then we have the HTTP access token, which we can just copy, and then we can paste it in our credential here. All right, let's click save. And that has created our credential with Telegram. So that means when we send a message to that bot, we will receive it here in our node. So let's go ahead and execute. And now we're just listening for that new message. If we go to Telegram and click on the tutorial bot, and we're going to click start. And here we have sent a forward slash start message, which was received here in our notes. So you can see the conversation here and you can see the text forward slash start. All right, so that's looking really good. We have our first node. Now, of course, we need an AI agent in order to actually uh, come up with a response. So here we have AI and we have AI agent. Okay, and we can see here the conversation that we had from the previous node, right? Now, a few things to note here. First of all, we need to define below our prompt and the prompt is simply going to be what the user has sent us. Okay, so here, let me just find that. We have the text here, click and drag and put it in the prompt for the user message. And that should be all that we need. Now, um, the AI agent needs an LLM to actually function, right? So here we have a chat model. Let's click on plus and you can choose whichever one you want. You can choose a free one like Grok or if you have it installed on your own machine, you can use Olama. But I'm going to, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use OpenAI chat model. Now for OpenAI chat model, we need to have credentials obviously for OpenAI. So if you don't have that, just go to platform.openai.com forward slash API keys. If you don't have an account with them, you will need to create an account. Um, you might also need to add some funding for your account. That should be like $5 or something like that. So it's not expensive and you can use that. It goes quite a long way. The models don't really take up a lot of funding and you will need that of course to actually access the API. All right, so I have my, my key already, but if you don't just go ahead and click on create new secret key and you put your name and that's basically it. Create secret key and copy that go back to uh, NA10 and go ahead and create a new credential here. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need. Now we have our OpenAI chat model, so that is working fine. And the last thing we're gonna need is to send the message back to our user, right? So here we have a new node. This is going to be again, Telegram. 
and down below we have send a text message. So make sure you select the correct credential, message and send message. Now we don't have chat ID and text yet. Um, before we add this, let's go ahead and remove it and let's run the AI agent. So that should uh, finish correctly. And then let me just add it again. Just go step by step and then add, uh, send the text message. And now we have the input. So if I open up Telegram trigger, we have the entire uh, JSON here for the conversation. Okay, so we're going to leave this as message operation send message. The chat ID is important because um, we can call this from multiple chats. Multiple users can access the Telegram bot. So we need to have a specific chat ID to send the message back. But that's easy to find. We have it under chat here click and drag to chat ID. And of course, we want to send back the text message. Okay, the text message, we're going to find it up here from AI agent, output, click and drag to text. And that is basically all we need. Um, there's one more thing that we need because NA10 is kind of sneaky and adds an ending to our message. So if we click on add field, NA10 attribution, you can see that this is active by default, which is not really nice. So we need to just deactivate that. So with that done, let's go ahead and run our code. That node is running. There's a problem, authorization failed. I didn't select the correct authorization, that's fine. And then let me run that again. And now it succeeded. So if I go back, I can see the message has been replied to. Now, if I send the message here, hey, how are you? Now we're not going to receive a message. The reason for that is the workflow doesn't run automatically. It only runs automatically if we activate it. Okay. So for now it's not active. Maybe we can just save it, but we need to activate it in order to receive a message. Otherwise we can just go step by step and run the nodes, which I prefer to do for now because um, this is how we basically build the system. All right. Now the next thing I want to implement is while we are waiting for a message, I want the telegram bot to have a typing message here. Okay. And that's quite simple to implement right here between the telegram trigger and the AI agent. We're going to add a node. We're going to search for telegram. And here we're going to add a send a chat action. Okay. Make sure you select the right credential. I always make that mistake and we need the chat ID and click and drag the chat ID. And that's basically it. We have send chat action and we have typing. So that is fine. So let me run the nodes again, running this, we have received this new message. And if I run that and go back to telegram, we can see the typing here is happening. That's not going to last forever. It's going to last for a short time, but it works as intended. And let's just run through the entire model that has changed now. So I think we need to update this message text. Let me just make sure we have the right one. The message text is going to be, Hey, how are you? Okay. So if I run that, that should be successful. And then we can send the message to our user, just a computer program and so on. All right. So there's a few things we need to do now. So, um, if I say something like my name is Catalin, the system is going to run through, uh, everything, but it's not going to remember my name. The reason for that is it doesn't have any memory. Okay. So we need to add some memory so that we can have a proper conversation with our chat model. And that's very, very easy to implement. We just click on this memory button. We have simple memory for the purposes of this video. We can just have a number of replies in the conversation stored in our memory. And then we can reply based on those for a production system. You might want to look into a database memory or something like that, Postgres, Redis, and so on. But for now, we're just going to add a simple memory. And here I'm going to define below. And the key here is obviously going to be under telegram trigger is going to be the chat ID. Okay. And also it's important to define your context window length. So how many messages do you want stored in your conversation in your memory? Let's go for 20 maybe. All right. So that is all. So let's go ahead and run the system. So now this is the, my name is message. And if I run my AI agent, that is working fine. Okay. So nice to meet you. And if I say, what is my name? And if I run through all these nodes again, 
Okay, we can see that your name is Katalin. How can I assist you further? So we can see that the memory has been implemented. Now, if I ask it something like, what is the weather now in London, UK? Do you think that's gonna know what the weather is? Obviously not, because it doesn't have the training up until today. Um, so it's probably gonna give us a simple answer. And of course we get the message, I don't have real time data capabilities, it doesn't know basically. So if we want to add uh, web search capabilities so that we can uh, actually, the model can actually search on the web and give us some responses, we need to add it the tool to do that. So the tool to do that, the simplest one is going to be the SERP API. The SERP API allows us to search the web. If you sign up for SERP API, you get, I think a hundred or a thousand free searches uh, per month so you can play with it and kind of test it out. Now for the SERP API we need to go to serpapi.com you need obviously to create an account there and then you need to go to manage API keys or just click on API key here and you can regenerate an API key copy that and of course go back to your NA10 and create a new credential obviously I have one already please don't use my key I will just regenerate it after recording this video so it won't work. All right, so we have our SERP API. That's basically all we need to configure here. Basically nothing. We just have the functionality um, out of the box, basically. So let me just save this and then let's go and ask it. What is the weather in London? And we get the current weather in London, UK is as follows, and it gives us the correct information. And we can see that the search uh, SERP API has been um, correctly called. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you, if you want to add some, um, some different prompts to your model, let's say you want to have the response in a certain way. So for example, here, I might want to say, so this is the actual um, request from the user, but I can add more information. So for instance, you are a helpful agent that replies with jokes and emojis. Okay, so if I add that, um, and then I run this the model again, what is the weather in Paris? And then we get the uh, response, the weather in Paris is a bit, th so there's a bit more personality to it, right? Um, clouds are a power trip, it tries to make jokes, uh, kind of fails, but any it, it still works, right? So it depends on the prompt that you want to give it. The last step, of course, is to save our model, our workflow, and make it active. Click got it, and then we should be able to talk with the model in real time. So for example, if I ask what is the latest open AI model released, hit that, and then we get typing and we get the actual response in the form of some try hard jokes and some emojis. Okay, so that's how the system works. How That's how you can build the Telegram bot. And of course, you can add more functionality to it if you need it. You can add more tools, you can add more information to it and whatever you need to personalize it for your own use case. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.